Former Navy SEAL Jonathan Gilliam. Jonathan, good to have you back. It's always good to be here. Um, that's a lot more than the 19 who perpetrated the 9-11 attacks. It only takes one, as we saw in Australia, as we saw in Canada. It only took three in France. And twice it's taken two guys here in the United States to virtually cripple a city in Washington, D.C. with snipers and in Boston with the two brothers that uh, blew up uh, the Boston Marathon. Do you know how they get that recidivism figure? In other words, those who release and get back in battle, they must track them, right? I suppose. You know, Do you think it's one in five? Because it would seem higher. You ask such good questions when I come on here, and sometimes I'm, I'm amazed because I really can't tell you how. I mean, having been in the FBI, been in the military, I know a lot about intelligence and intelligence gathering, human tracking, human intelligence. I have no idea how they track these But people. you did say this from your last visit. When they are back in action... They're really back at action. That's the problem. They got a big chip on their they're, shoulder. And not just that. They, they took these people off the battlefield. So they're already trained. Now they have an even bigger chip or they have much deeper faith. And they're looked upon as heroes and commanders when they go back. I mean, even if there's one guy that goes back and is able to either muster up other people and motivate them or do it himself, you've already blown uh, the, the complete idea of closing down Gitmo and giving people back. So what is the rush with closing down Gitmo? Given the late developments here, what is the rush? It, it's all politics. And, you know, I was just listening to the representative from Hawaii, and she's a veteran, but I, I'm not really clear where these people's minds go when they sign on to politics. Because, you know, she herself is saying one thing about we have to look this, at this as one ideology, but yet the Democratic Party is, is differentiating between ISIS and al-Qaeda. Uh, the administration is, uh, is differentiating. There is no difference. And, Neil, we have to start looking at this. I mean, how many times do we have to have something before we say this is just another sign of who they are? We have well, to what do you make of the difference this way in the mo I mean, to kill it? That it wasn't a beheading, burning alive. You know, and I think of when people are pulled or what scares them most, the scariest way to die, mm -hmm. uh, generally it's, it's, it's dying in a fire. Neil, you know, Hollywood's been around for a long, long time, and they continuously make uh, more and more horrific movies. It's the same thing here. How many times are you going to behead somebody before the public just stops watching or starts? They're desensitized. Stops, they're desensitized. And the reality is, you know, anybody who lives uh, where there's big storms, they'll know when trees are planted in front yards, these big trees, when they fall over, there's a root system that destroys the whole yard or sidewalk. That's what we're looking at. We're looking at one ideology. It is a religious ideology, and it has roots all over the but world But did now. this change because it was a Jordanian pilot killed, and now it erupts in the Arab world? I hope that the Jordanians look at this, and you know, their their king, you know, he ruled a or, or was the general of her special forces unit there. I hope that he's looking at this in the unconventional okay. way that this is being fought. Jonathan, I appreciate having you on this kind of a day, especially. Thank you very, very much.